our community and you've come to visit again and I'm so pleased. Welcome. The person that I have to introduce to you today has been around, he and I both have been around a long time. <laughs> and his name is Wilbur Newald. And he said that all of the things that he does, first and foremost, he is an artist and a painter. Yeah. And I, um, uh, I think that's wonderful because he's never forgotten where his talent lies and what it, he really does. He studied as a student at the Kansas City Art Institute and he went on to teach there for 43 years, spending 23 of that 43 years as chair of the painting and printmaking department. He has had many shows, many honors, and he was elected to the National Academy of Design in New York. The Metropolitan Museum of Art owns his work as does the Nelson. And we really, Wilbur, could just go on and on and on. Mm. But I think that the accolades are clear <laughs> that you have earned with your mm. talent. And it is my opinion that an artist is truly an eye on the soul of the world. And such is Wilbur Newald. So we want to explore a little bit just who is this person <laughs> that his mother named Wilbur. <laughs> 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 and I think probably the best way to do it is to tell these folks that always you have been a plein air artist. Now, what is a plein air artist? Well, first of all, I have not always been a plein air artist. Oh, you didn't start out that way? No. Oh. Uh, certainly I did as a, a student in my <laughs> early years. And, and then in the 1950s, when I was beginning to teach, and uh, going through a big change or, or forming my ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did paint what we would call, one would call abstractly, in this way, that I went to nature that is outside, mm -hmm. and nature, in this case, I'm using uh, as anything we see. In other words, landscapes, mm -hmm. uh, cities. Uh, but I went outside to begin the work and drew, and, but when I had a great influence in those early years, um, of besides my teacher who was Vincent Campanella, uh, and then I took a trip to Mexico and my ideas began to form and then there was an exhibition, I won't go into detail right now uh -huh, on that, fine. That's fine. but I went to an exhibition at the Art Institute uh -huh. And it was from the Museum of, of Modern Art in New York. And it's titled The City. And there were hoppers and birch fields. And, uh -huh. and <clears throat> all I can say is I saw this Mondrian facade, uh -huh. abstract, it was a drawing. Mm -hmm. And it, it would coincided with things that were going on in my own thoughts. It spoke to you. It, it did. It indeed, really did. It spoke yeah. to me. Yeah. And so my earliest work, even though they started from nature, like uh, directly, mm -hmm. uh, it was drawings that maybe I spent only a half hour and they're quite abstract. And then I came in the studio and worked on the, on the paintings. And it wasn't uh, through a memory of color or anything like that. It was through this idea of uh, abstraction, really. I wanted, I wanted abstraction at that time. And uh, then I, will, I uh, painted a, that in that manner, going through an evolution of my work. Uh, it seemed like it took a decade of the 50s to work in a low key palette, mm -hmm. and then in the 60s in a higher key and larger format. Mm -hmm. And then you want me to go on with no, this no, story? No, I, I, no, you don't need to. I want to talk, uh, I want to kind of um, take your art apart, if you would allow me to do sure. so. Sure. Yeah. And I, I think that I'd like to start with your style. Yes. That, uh, where you paint now and where you have painted okay, in the last good. few years. Yeah. And, I, uh, and you like Kansas City yes. because you're basically a Kansas City, and as I mm -hmm. am. And your pictures of Kansas City are, they're, I guess, for lack of a better word, they're full of plain truth about uh, things. Oh, thank you. Um, but, you know, you have a gray freeway and rather nondescript buildings and mm -hmm. undistinguishable roadside plating that are kind of unremarkable, except you have invested some emotion in 
to your paintings. Now, talk about investing emotion, because a lot mm -hmm. of people paint, but it's not very good. <laughs> Because, yeah. uh, but their emotion isn't there. So yeah. talk about that. How does well, that happen? I, I appreciate the, that remark. Um, just to pick it up this way, that then in 1970, uh, I began to paint all of my paintings directly from nature. So that's when the work you So you became a plein air artist about 1970. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, all of that from the present and... Uh, okay. Now, put so, the emotion so, in the art. So the emotion... Yes. Um, well, the simplest way that I can put it is something that Giacometti said and that I feel, that all art is subjective. So you, 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 the emotion that I feel is when I'm doing it. In other words, you, you can't conjure this up. You can't try to be expressive. You're just reacting to what is in front of you, and you feel it, and then you feel the 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 the, uh, the paint itself the, that is what you're doing, but it, you, you it's uh, uh, I do feel again that it's always going to be you could uh, whatever you're doing I would tell my students it doesn't matter uh, whether you're just drawing from the model here in a gray studio the emotion that you put in it is going to be there right away always uh, but you know wilbur everybody yeah. cannot transfer that emotion from the picture to the to the viewer yeah. it doesn't always work well well that i guess that's true and, and i i appreciate your compliment there uh if i am communicating uh and of course i want to i want but I, I don't start um, with that idea mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. trying to communicate to an audience. I start with the idea of being honest and, and genuinely trying to understand what I see. You talked just briefly just a minute ago about <coughs> when you saw the Mondrian uh, uh -huh. painting and it spoke to you. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what, what speaks to you, Wilbur? Is it ideas that speak to you or reality that speaks to you? What mm. what what? What well, that's, uh, that's a good question, but a hard question. <laughs> what spoke to me just in the Mondrian, uh, I really don't know. Uh, it's just that it had, uh, it, it was real to me. Here mm -hmm. is all, all of, it was only one, it was really that abstract because mm -hmm. the birch fields and the, the hopper, you know, were, yeah, were paintings yeah, that I enjoy and still yeah. do. But for some reason, this abstraction uh, was real to me. And so so real, and uh, uh, I I don't know, and 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 as to what speaks to me when I'm out looking for the motif, I can't really tell you. It's just that you you find it. There's there are lots of subjects out there, but the, a motif uh, for me is, is something that, for want of a better way to describe it, is is a painting. In other words, you look and you look and you stand on the hill and you look out and then you see a painting and then you just try to realize it. You know, I, I I think that's so yeah. interesting. I, I'm always interested in that kind of an answer. I interviewed many years ago, interviewed a, a gentleman who was a classical guitarist. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, well, you're good, but there are a lot of people that are good out there. Mm -hmm. And there are. Yeah, yeah. So what is the difference between good and excellent? And you know what he said to me? I'll tell you what he said to me. He said, it's my ability to focus, to take that one more step over mm. the threshold and to become very absorbed in mm. what I'm doing. And I would suggest that that's what you're, when you say, mm. I don't know, I think maybe you don't, but I think that's what happens to you. Mm. You're able to focus and become maybe figuratively a part of what you're painting. That's good. Yeah. It's think? good what you're saying. That's fine. <laughs> you I appreciate it. We'll use it. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. If I, yeah. If I am that way and come but across it. But I think it that's. But I think that's what makes a uh, really fine artist, yeah, or a really yeah. fine artist of many kinds, you yeah. know, that are out there. And then just a lot of uh, hard work and patience. Tremendous amount of patience it takes. This is what I would always tell. Practice. <laughs> Practice. Don't you yeah. think so? Yes. Yeah. Do you think you're a better painter today than you were 40 years ago? Well, yes, I do. I, I think that I have learned a few things and that uh, 
you feel mm -hmm. that each painting you're you're gaining. I, I do really feel in the last year or so that I've taken a little more of a step. Have you changed your style in the last year? No, no. no. Mm -hmm. the, as I said, in 1970 when I said, I uh, looked out the studio window and I said, why am I uh, not just looking out and painting what I see? And it was one of the most liberating, freeing experiences that I've ever had. Isn't that wonderful? And from that moment, that's always, it, it, that's why I paint, because I'm stimulated by what I see and I just want to realize it. That's all I want to try to do. So in answer to your question about advancing, I feel even today when I was painting a, a, a model and a, a portrait that I, there was one little step each day, maybe one little step that you, something you learn, you hope. I hope. And we then, all do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just what I said before. I think the artist is, has an eye on the soul of the world. And that's, uh -huh. that's really what, what you do. Uh -huh. You know, so many people use impasto. They put a putty knife on the, and uh -huh. you, you've never done that. Well, uh, yes, when, when I was a student, actually, I did do a few uh, palette knife paintings. But it you were kind of fine. experimenting with your style? At well, no, I, it no. just, it, it meant something to me uh -huh. at that time. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. still, for someone, I, I don't think it, I would ever go back to that because I love the, what a, the, the, the uh, flexibility and vers versatile uh, element of, of the paintbrush, soft hair paintbrush. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, as I looked at, at some of the, th the things that you have done, I noticed that usually the buildings that you do, and the, the one we just showed mm -hmm. of Kansas City, they're usually positioned in the upper third of your canvas. You, mm -hmm. They're up toward the top. Yes. Uh -huh. And then they give you sort of a sense of compression. Does that have anything to do with the energy that you create, or do you think about that? That's, that's that's an interesting observation. Uh, <clears throat> no, I, this is as to the method of my working. I go to the site. I've already maybe been there and looked and found uh, generally what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. and then I don't try to make. I don't make preliminary drawings or studies. I set up my canvas, and I start sort of from the inside, the middle, the, like you kind of picked up the focus. Mm -hmm. That's where I would start and, and work out. That's so, so you start at the middle and work up and down and to the yes, side? Yes, yes. Not the exact middle, but, and I don't well, think, I don't want to, th I don't think about it. I don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. I just want to react and uh, strangely enough, I, uh, just through years of experience, I realized that it, that it can, it can re repeat by that. I, I remember doing an etching Mm -hmm. And and I would uh, and I started again, more or less in the center or close to it. That was the focal, the, the focus. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason I started another one, and it was almost identical spot. And yet I wasn't thinking about it, but for something, some reason, I was attracted to that as the beginning. And well, then just Booper, out. you're like a good golfer. You don't want to overthink your shots. Yeah, right. No, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but you know, um, the subjects that you choose to paint, I think, also are, are kind of interesting. And um, the inspiration that, that inspires you, because you just said now you look around and um, <clears> there's <throat> one that you painted of the trees in Loose Park that I think mm -hmm. is the strength and the, I mean, it's just wonderful, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you. but what, why did you pick that set of trees as opposed to a, another set of trees? Yeah. What, what? Well, let's, uh, um, well, as far as the Loose Park paintings are concerned, which uh, I started uh, maybe six, seven years ago, uh, and have come back every summer to, to Loose Park. And they're really, uh, number one, it's because I enjoyed it. My wife and I were walking through the park, and, and I and uh, and I looked at these pine trees, and I thought, well, it's that's it. I, yeah, I have to. <laughs> so I've been going for the last seven, eight years. Uh, I've been going there regularly, and um, that it, it's. Uh, uh, 
I, but it just is, you know, whatever seems to be right. And, and uh, see again, so. Wilbur, you don't overthink it. Yeah. I think I think that. See, to me, that's just fascinating. Uh -huh. But you're getting so that you know those trees <laughs> pretty yeah, well. Yeah, right. <laughs> I should add. There's a second reason too. What? Uh, that I do the pine trees. It's my second series. I do four paintings in a, in a six month period. Mm -hmm. And the first are you have been reg uh, the city views, and then the second uh, three months, I do Loose Park. And the reason I do it the second three months is because uh, I don't have to go through the changing of color of fall. So I can stay out there and, and really brave the cold weather a little bit. But uh, that, that is definitely one of the reasons why I have That's done very efficient. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> 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 but you know, the other thing too, nature is movement more, I think, and architecture is more maybe placid or mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, so you well, change about. Well, the, the <coughs> my personal view is that uh, whether it's it's nature or whether it's buildings or whether it's still life or figure, basically it's all the same. See, uh -huh. what we see really is just color, uh, and that's really all we see. We but see structure too, do you know? Well, we no? sense structure. You sense structure. You see, you can't say you see it in the same way that you see sensations of color mm -hmm. but um, I well that's that's just the way that I uh, approach it and uh, uh, I just but it, but in, I know I was talking with a, a, another painter rather well-known painter uh, in New York and one day we were talking about this and I said really all painting is still life see in other words and he questioned me on this, but I said, see, you really can't paint my hand. If I move my hand, you, because, I mean, you could put an image down, but you're not really seeing it. And so, even though we talk about the figure having movement, it moves, as the time you're painting, it's just another still life it's in and, and and you th i think i just speak for myself but don't you think sometimes the perception of the observer is movement i mean as i look at what you have done oh, well, i uh, see the oh that i like the movement that and yes the, I, I, I like that because because someone you know mm -hmm. different times someone might observe they like the movement or or one mm -hmm. very nice compliment i get that i feel that the tree i could see the movement in the trees mm -hmm. that's all fine but like you mm -hmm. said, uh, I, I, I don't try to think of it that way. I don't try to say, well, I want to show the movement. I just want to. But that's a gift mm. that the artist gives to the observer, I think. Yeah. Well, I that, think that's, that's, that's a nice thought. Uh, yeah. Colors, color palette. You have, um, you, you know, we live in a world of noise mm -hmm. and color and mm -hmm. explosions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and your color palette um, is is um, restful. Oh, well, that's nice. I like that. Do you do you? Well, how do you choose that color palette? Does it just appeal to you, or? Well, at, at least now, and and basically since I began to work uh, all uh, directly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am not uh, trying to enhance or force the color in any way. Now, those early paintings of mine that were, which we don't have any slides of those, but uh, even though, I, like that painting that I said when I looked out the window and was painting mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. what I wanted to do was just paint what I saw. But we always bring in preconceptions. So those, the key of the color, the greens were brighter than they really were, and you know, and mm -hmm. I still was thinking space because that's what in the early years mm -hmm. I was thinking about. So it took, you learn to see. It takes years and years and years and you never, of course, uh, get, uh, see everything. You just are learning. But you sharpen, you consistently sharpen your senses as you practice yes. and produce and uh -huh. observe. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, uh, you hope, uh, well, you do, you, f you feel uh, yeah. if, if you keep the focus, and I, again, I would talk to my students about that, that 
then you are always going to improve. If you level off and are satisfied or think in terms of a style or what is me and become self-conscious about it, then I think, I don't know what happens, but if Nothing you look, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's right. Yeah. But you, um, I know you have done some still life and, and um, yeah. with a very sensitive, I think, color mm -hmm. palette. You've also painted a lovely picture of your wife, Jerry. Yes. And yeah. uh, you, uh, the, the color, there she is, and she is lovely. And right, you, you have painted her in a black dress with, and in shades of kind of a blue-gray. Mm -hmm. Was that a conscious? Did you tell her what you wanted her to wear? Um, that's a that's a very good question. Um, I have well, first of all, I've done my wife Jerry, and she's wonderful. She is very beautiful, patient, too, patient, and very patient. <laughs> but she, uh, to be honest, she's not crazy about sitting that uh -huh. long. But um, as to what she's uh, uh, wearing. We talk about it, and and but I want her to be satisfied. There was one time I've now done. That's the I've remark done, I've done of a good husband. 10. That's the remark of a good husband. <laughs> you want her to be satisfied. Well, I'll, I'll have to tell her. That. Yes. <laughs> but I, I will say though that there was one time when I wasn't so nice I, this way. Um, I just I've ten, done ten at least ten paintings of her, portraits of her. And besides drawings and all of that, and maybe a watercolor, but uh, uh, I wanted, this was a few years ago, I wanted to do her in a red dress. Mm -hmm. And it had to be just, and she didn't have a particular color, so we even shopped around and I would have gotten one, a new one, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we couldn't find it. And I finally went in the antique store and found one that was about four sizes too large, <laughs> so she went to. I don't think I still think it's a, it's a good painting. A lot of people do like it, but uh, I try to. But see, every be a time she more. looks at that, she thinks, "No, I'm not that big." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but you have done. You have a wonderfully large body of work uh, that has evolved as. You have grown mm -hmm. older and have mm -hmm. done more art over the years. Um, who would you pick out as the most interesting artist you've ever known personally? Well, I don't know if I could really answer that. You're talking about the personal. Yeah, yeah, somebody uh, you knew. And as to what, what, what uh, interesting, I don't and know. Interesting work. Interesting work. Mm -hmm. Uh, it would be hard for me to say one person. I, I certainly uh, did have that influence uh, when I was working on my master's degree mm -hmm. with Vincent Campanella, and I thought, and, and he died just a few years ago, a very important painter. And, and he was a great influence on your life. And, and did have a, an influence on my life. But uh, I know a lot of artists that I, or a number, Mm -hmm. whose work I enjoy. and it'd Do you be collect hard to other people's art? Pardon me? Do you collect other artists' art? Uh, not really. I, of course, my daughter is a painter, a very good painter, and we do have a number of her works. Well, now there, of course yeah. you have. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that goes but without saying. Yeah. Um, if you had to pick, I mean, you have paintings, you've had honors, you've had recognition, you've had a really... Um, life full of um, excellence. What yeah. what was a, a really proud moment for you in, in your with your art? What did anything happen to you uh, that was said about you that was uh, presented to you that someone mm -hmm. in a gallery that bought a painting or that well, you were particularly good. proud? Uh, well. Uh, I ha did have, even in, in childhood years, I went to this art institute when I was 10 years old, mm -hmm. and it was really c kind of a, a competition. Mm -hmm. The art institute representatives came out, uh -huh. and they read a story, and then the class, this particular class in grade school, and we would do an illustration. At Blenheim. Yes, at Blenheim. <laughs> yes. And this particular, uh, and, and I was selected as the uh, the one to 
attend the Art Institute Saturday classes as a child. So that was a very important uh, honor uh, for myself. And then, uh, well, I, I had honors uh, in teaching and the, the But it's interesting that you picked that one when you were 10 years old because I would suggest to you that that honor was probably the most important because it shaped and it had an it's it, it certainly did have an enormous impact. Yes, you're right. Because uh, I can remember the influence of that teacher, and she was just in love with art and in love with Impressionism, whereas many at that age, college level, mm -hmm. were, were really influenced more by the academy. And here a woman, uh, this would have been in 35, and about that uh, period, 1935, mm -hmm. Uh, and I went there about in those classes about four years. But she was in love with art, as I said, and an impression of color and simplicity. So the palette that I used uh, then is basically what I use now, just chalk uh, and toned paper. And it was, uh, and the simplicity, no, when we did the, we had model too, I mean, an old man sitting there, and, but it wasn't faces, in other words, she, she wanted it to be very simple, and so that uh, that undoubtedly, as you said, it, it it had a great impact on my my life. And I suppose just to jump then to more recent years, um, if I had to say one honor that w that might be the highest, it might be the. Uh, selection uh, of one of my paintings by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I would say that that was a that, huge that honor. That was a very great honor. Um, it is said that art requires courage. Do you think that's true? Yes, I do, probably. Courage, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I guess. You have to mm -hmm. kind of stick your neck out there once in a while. Y yes, y yes. I think, uh, but, uh, it, you don't necessarily think that you're so courageous if you if you just go about it honestly. In other words, you're, you're not trying to uh, impress anyone or trying to be a anything other than what you are. And, and I guess that, that takes courage too. Ah, but an artist has, who really is, a, an artist who really is good is willing to bear his or her soul through yes the oh, art. oh definitely yeah. well I remember when I went through that big change mm -hmm. from you know just being a, a representational mm -hmm. painter mm -hmm. into abstraction you know there were a lot of people that were couldn't understand why I would do that he said have you lost your mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> right well yeah. yeah but see you were willing to say this is who oh, I yes. am now. I, I didn't have a choice. Yeah, that, that's right. See? Yeah. And I, I think that's most interesting. Just real quick, where are you going from here? Are you with well, your art? Uh, well, I, I don't see any uh, big, large changes in my ideas, concept, mm -hmm. and where I hope I'm going is just to, to ex expand in what I'm doing, to see more, to. Um, and I just feel so fortunate to be able to do it. And, and I do too. I yeah. do too. And as I say, thank you so much, Wilbur Newald. Well, I would quote another um, piece of um, what I think is important, and says the art, um, the artist has an obligation to shed light into the darkness of men's hearts. It is a duty. And I would say to you that Wilbur Newald stands on his hill in Kansas City. He looks out over the city and he finds in it what he can understand and find beautiful and he paints it. And we have enjoyed it so many years. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank I you enjoy. all for being with us. You know, it's our community.